Okay, so we're going to talk about climate classification. We've talked about how climates, we know climates have changed over time, but how are cl climates generally classified? Well, climates are kind of a subtle thing, the boundary between climate A and climate B perhaps, but by golly, you know you're in a totally different climate. For instance, if you were born in the Midwest and um, with a certain type of climate and you end up in tropical rainforest. So climates, keep in mind, um, like the like weather, climates and weather, climate and weather both deal with the atmosphere. But as we learned in chapter one, and you, I'm sure, knew before you came to this course, um, climates are the long-term atmospheric conditions of a general region. So what that means is they gather data, atmospheric data, for perhaps over 30 years or so, and um, take an average of that data and come up with a general climate for a general region for a general time of the year. Um, as I said, it's kind of hard to tell where one climate starts and one climate ends. Okay, um, So there are, as I understand it, more than one way to come up with a, a climate classification scheme. We're going to use um, a common one that was developed back in 1918, 1936 um, off of the Köppen um, classification scheme um, or a variation of that and um, notice that this slide the title is in red so you know what that means dun, 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 that on this slide um, is the essence of one of those five questions from unit five that you're going to see on your final exam um, I can tell you right away uh, it some, has something to do with how do we um, differentiate between climates and let me see if the cursor will work here right here where it says differences in vegetation related to largely the differences in precipitation and temperature that's the answer so what Koppen did is he noticed that between regions the vegetation differed and like the slide says why did the vegetation um, differ it was mostly because of differences in temperature and precipitation so, temperature and precipitation is the answer. So, um, on the scheme we're going to focus on, we're going to use the main categorizations for climate of A, B, C, D, E, and then it skips to the letter H. Now, here in a little bit, you're going to see um, a, a map of the world, and if it kind of works nicely if you put A at the equator, and then both north and south, you generally put B, and both north and south beyond that, you put towards the poles, you put C, towards the poles, you put D, towards the poles, you put E. Now, it's, it's not that cut and dried, but kind of in general, that's what we've got going on here. Um, so, we'll talk just a little bit um, about these main um, climates here, uh, but I'll warn you that this chapter, like the previous two chapters in Unit 5, is very brief. But A, um, we'll deal with tropical climates, B, dry climates, C, mid-latitude climates, excuse me, mild mid-latitude climates, D, severe mid-latitude climates, E, polar climates, and H, kind of a catch-all, would be the highland climates. Now, with each one of these <coughs> main classifications, um, a second letter and sometimes a third letter goes with them to further describe their climate types. So this is kind of a nice... Um, table to um, summarize all of that. Um, <clears throat> before we jump into the climates, this slide kind of shows you, you know, it's hard to know where one climate begins and the other one, one climate ends and the other climate begins. Um, it's rather seasonal and kind of a subtle change. <clears throat> if you're clear on the coast or west coast of the United States and California, you know that you're in a different climate than you are, for instance, than if you were in the Midwest. But at what point does that climate change? 